Hey guys, what's up? It's Sismed here. Now, I had a little bit of a mechanical problem with my Witcher cosplay, and that is namely that I had this single belt that goes across my shoulders that I needed to attach two swords to. And now I invite you to join me along the journey for how I made a scabbard holster, or if you will, a scabbard scabbard, for the two swords attaching to a single belt. I'm gonna take you through how I arrived at the final design through to the creation and all of the speed bumps and revisions along the way through to some nice glossy reveal shots. So won't you please join me? Okay, so now is as good a time as any to talk about the problem of the sheets. Because the way that they're shown in the game, which I'll put in screen like here, is that they just kind of hover adjacent to the belt, which isn't super helpful for our purposes, being denizens of the real world. So, what I'm going to do is make some kind of harness that will, one, hold on to the scabbards, and two, hold on to the sword belt. But how am I going to accomplish it? Well, my idea at the moment, so basically we're going to have the sword belt running over the shoulder and down across the back. But basically what we're going to have is a fairly wide piece of leather. None of this is to scale because I haven't done any of the measurements yet. The idea basically being that there would be a second layer stitched on running up here. There are two ways that I can go about this. Either that bottom layer can be the full width, which would go all the way up, and we would stitch it down at either end, and we would stitch it down at this point in the middle. And what that does is sort of create, if you want to think about it, like three little tubes of leather. The sword belt will be running internally to this, and it'll come out here and go all the way around the front of the body. And this extra little belt is going to connect to this little buckle. So this is what's going to hold the assembly in place, and then these side ones would be used for inserting a scabbard. The other thought that I have is that I might have like a bigger backing piece like that, but then because you wanna see a fair amount of the scabbards, it might be nice just to have like a top piece that comes down here, and I don't know what length I want this to be as well, so. I need to ask myself if I want this to be like a big rectangle section, if I perhaps want to just do smaller bits up the top for accepting the scabbards and then have a cutaway here, or if that's completely pointless and I can just bring the whole thing up and just have a much shorter piece. So this is my rough idea. It's essentially going to be a slip for each of the scabbards that they can go into that is attached to a central sleeve that will fit over the sword belt. I hope this made a little bit of sense seeing it in a drawing before I actually try and attack it, but this is just kind of where my thinking's at. And I wanted to give you guys, you know, a little bit of an insight into my creative process, even if I've already arrived at a lot of the ideas. Here, this is still far before the prototyping phase, so let's get this made out of something and see if I can get something to work. Revision number one. I decided to go with separate sleeves on top. The dotted lines are showing where the stitching will end up going down, but the plan here is to cut out four pieces that will be glued and stitched together in different methods. So the actual slips will go through three layers of leather in the center, two on the edge, and will then be stitched shut at the top. cut out the back panel as well as the channel for the belt to go through and I have also 
beveled all of the edges. You like that sound, don't you? I'm just running some dye tests at the moment because I'm not 100% sure what color I want this thing to be. So the dye has just dried and I've just put some conditioner on it. So these two, the reason that I was trying them was because I haven't used this brand of dye before and there's not really any indication on the bottles themselves as to what color the dye is going to wind up. So basically we've just got these three color tests. I don't like the coffee, we can rule that one out straight away. The English bridle is too orange, so I'm not a huge fan of that. So I believe we shall be using the light brown. Possibly a slightly thinner coat than what I've used just there, but that's what we're going to be using to colour these pieces. So we'll get some dye on them and we'll burnish the edges and then golly gee willikers, we are very close to actually punching and stamping some holes in these. I wanted to skive down the edges of this middle piece for some geometry reasons that you're going to see later. And I had heard and seen that you can actually use a head knife or crescent knife to accomplish this. So as a little bit of an experiment that I conducted mainly for my own benefit, I decided to use my skiving knife on one side and my crescent knife on the other. And the results? Well, I think that this is something that with a little bit of practice could turn out just as nicely as using the skiving knife. So watch this space. Hey gang, it is nighttime, so please excuse if the light is a little bit crap, but I'm starting to fit the tapered sleeves that the scabbards themselves are actually going to rest in. And it's actually something that I think bears being shown on film. So I'll just set the camera up and I'm gonna talk you through what we're doing here. Now, what we're trying to accomplish is to get this sleeve to fit snugly at the bottom of the metal part at the top of this scabbard, the name of which I should know. We can see that that is just barely touching. And that's what we're after. So what I've been doing, I'll just mark roughly where the overlap needs to get taken away. And I'm just using my small bearded knife to trim it back. So we're just There we go, taking the slightest slightest little slivers off of it. Just having to be careful not to take off too big of a bite at once. Also careful of that very sharp knife on the table. But you can see, possibly, you can see the leather is a little bit damp and that's just to make it more malleable. So here's a dry piece of the same leather. You can see the color is lighter and it's less wanting to bend. The thing is, I want it to be damp enough to be malleable so that I can place it here on the scabbard and work on my fitment. However, we're not ready to wet form it yet. So I really need to monitor the moisture levels. If it gets too wet, it'll start hardening and that's just gonna make everyone's life harder. Anyway, I'm just gonna continue on like this, just taking little slivers off and get there half a mil at a time. So if you've been hanging around here for a little bit, this will be a familiar scene to you. Also, hi, how are you? Thanks for coming back. Now, this is a new die for me. So, whoops, that's a terrible start. So, what we're doing is we're first just putting a tiny little bit of moisture into the leather. And what we're getting this water to do is to just open up the fibers of the leather. So we'll start here and just work our way out. Wow, wow, this is really pretty. I'm getting really good coverage. This is hardly a review. First impressions, really nice. Gonna make sure to go over all of the edges so that they stay nice and dark when we go through and burnish them. That's what I'm after. Oh, fuck yeah, bud. That's exactly what I am after. That's what we wanted. Okay then. That's why it's always a good idea to start with the less visible piece. We'll leave this to dry and then I think we're actually up to assembly, which is pretty exciting. Good morning, gang. Hope we're all doing well. <sighs> so, everything's nice and dry now. So, we'll get all this dye stuff out of the way and then we'll start stitching first this one on here and then these two 
on either side once the first piece is attached. So honestly, looking forward to getting stuck into some nice relaxing saddle stitching. And if you're like me and you struggle to think of what to do with the little leftover bits of thread that is just like, you know, it's kind of frustrating to have to throw it away, I've got the perfect solution. Oh. Gimli the rat always seems happy to take my spare string from me. Hey Gimli, you want this? He's busy with a pistachio right now. So we are now thankfully at a point where all of the bronze saddle stitching have been done. This is now a very firm piece that isn't going to like flex too much. The runs of saddle stitching down the bottom, I actually back stitched past the point that the scabbard holders join on. I just had the extra thread. I don't think it was necessary. I could have just done three there and it would have been fine, but well, you know, here we are. And I'd rather over reinforce it than under. Really happy with the shaping that I managed to get here. So skiving off the edge of this piece meant that I was able to bend it. So we've got this little channel here for the belt to run through. So all of that being said, what's next? Well, next it's time to wet form these parts to the swords. Now then, because this is a wet form, I'm going to be applying the water extremely generously and I'm gonna do these one at a time. So it is important that we get a good soaking of water throughout the whole thing. However, the most important parts are the sides where the actual bending is going to happen, but I'm gonna spread it around the whole thing regardless. So you can notice that is already much, much more malleable than, you know, here's our, here's our control. Doesn't really wanna bend all that much. This one's more than happy to fold over completely. But Grant, I hear you ask. Yes, dear viewer, I answer softly and with love. How do I tell when the leather is saturated? You question me, unperturbed by the unreasonable familiarity with which I speak to you. Well, dear viewer, I continue unabated. The way that you tell when it is saturated is when it will not accept any more water. That's the definition of saturation and it's not very helpful, Grant. Could you be more specific? Yes. When you put water on it, it'll stop accepting new water. That's the easiest way to tell when you've reached the enough point is when the fresh coats that you're putting on it are not being absorbed. And I believe that we have gotten to that point.
Wow, that's really misaligned. I did a shit job cutting that out. I intended for this harness system to be interchangeable. So if I wanted to use these swords with a different cosplay, I would be able to simply remove the scabbards like so. And you can see therein is the problem. The, um, the fit is too tight. My point is that <laughs> these are stuck and I need to figure out if I'm okay with that or if we just move on. And look, I'm thinking that we're just gonna move on. So then, this is the problem that we're currently having. I've realized that I'm an idiot. And that's not new information, but what made me realize it specifically this time was a Reddit post. Now then, in said Reddit post is a screenshot of the game where it shows that the anchor point for the swords that Geralt wears on his back is not, as I put on this scabbard, the top right beneath the collar of the scabbard, it's about a third of the way down. These currently are wanting to sit at that anchor point. So what I need to do is make these scabbards sit 15, 20 centimeters higher in this holster. Now, I just want to get out in front of this and say that there are probably some smart ways that I can do this. But the way that I'm thinking that I might accomplish this is simply by splitting these seams, shifting the entire scabbard up. At least that's what I'm thinking at the moment. So this is the result. I decided to put it further up on this belt just because that seemed to aid with the geometry. Because it's a three point harness, it's held in there very firmly no matter how much I wiggle like this. Sorry if that gave you motion sickness. But from the rear, I think it looks pretty fetching as well. So it's holding them at a pretty decent angle up and down my back. It is, well, successfully sitting in the one place and not moving around when I move around, which is basically what I was after. So I think that I'm going to let all of the glue dry on this and call this a success. So magnificent. Guys, thank you so much for joining me through the creation of this scabbard scabbard. I'm very well pleased with the manner in which it functions. So much so that I think I'll do the rest of this outro while wearing it. You guys, this was the final piece that was left to go in my Manticore armor cosplay. So I will see you in the reveal. If you do choose to hang around, please do feel free to subscribe. Otherwise, enjoy your continued browsing on the greater YouTube and may the algorithm bring you momentary enjoyment or long form enjoyment, if that's more your thing. You guys, take it easy and I'll catch you next time.